Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are going underwater. We're going to watch bass eat plastic worms. As we're watching the footage, watching these fish interact with the baits, I'm going to give you some tips and some tricks to help you catch more bass this year on the plastic worm. So many fishermen are committed to becoming better anglers at the new year. You want to get out there on the water this year, learn new techniques, hone your skills, and catch more fish. Well, the plastic worm is hands down the most universal bait in bass fishing. It's incredibly simple, and with some little tweaks and tricks in how you work the baits, it is incredible how many fish you can catch. You can rig it all sorts of different ways, you know, from a stick bait, weightless, to a shaky head, which is down on the bottom, to a Ned rig, a very finesse approach, to the drop shot suspended up in the water column. We have dedicated videos for each one of these styles, but today I'm going to show you examples of each and really explain the subtle nuances that will help you catch more fish. Let's start with the stick bait. The stick bait, the most common of which is a Senko, is a bait that you rig weightless. You can wacky rig it, stick a hook in the middle, or Texas rig it like this, where the hook is hidden, but when you throw it into the water weightless, it will slowly sink to the bottom, and it has a lot of movement on its way down. Now, this is a very simple bait that anybody can fish. This is truly back to basics today, but the key element across all of these different techniques, all these different ways of fishing a worm that I want you to focus on this year is to underwork the bait with every single one of these. And what I mean by that is there are all sorts of different ways to do this, but if you want to be more consistent this year, I want you to take the most simple fishing approach possible. Throw the bait out there and literally just let it sink to the bottom. Very little movement. Once in a while, you can give it a little bump and that thing will just kind of flutter and then continue sinking flutter and continue sinking. Once it's on the bottom, you can hop it back up and let it sink again. Less is more. That's what we've learned in these underwater videos. The best results come from that bait when it's been falling and falling and falling, and then you give it a little bump, and when it goes back to being still, they lash out and eat it. Other times they don't even need that. It will just be falling, and they come running out and wolf that thing. It's an incredibly simple way to fish, and it works across the country. A little five inch Senko is an incredible bait. Now, another one that's a major, major player, a Ned Rig. This thing has exploded in the last couple of years. Now there are all sorts of different worms, but essentially it's a little tiny bait rigged on an exposed head. Now there are a lot of varieties. Down in the video description, we'll link you our favorite baits. We'll link you the ones that you're seeing in the underwater footage so you know exactly what you're looking at. But again, with the Ned Rig, the temptation is to be aggressive with that bait, to hop it, to let it react, to let it move, to be really aggressive and get all this action out of the bait. That is what appeals to us as fishermen. To our eye, that is the best look. I mean, look how good this stuff looks underwater. But would you know that the bass react the best when that bait is either sitting perfectly still or is just barely moving? So again, we're going to follow this theme through this video. This year, if you just want to catch more fish, focus on that dead action, that do nothing approach. Just barely move that bait and then just let it sit. Barely move it and let it sit. That's all you have to do, and those fish just react on their own. We've found over the years, filming all of this underwater footage, we've been doing this for years now, that the vast majority of fish eat right when a bait stops moving. Whether that's an aggressive, fast-moving bait, like a crankbait where you pause it and they bite, or it's a worm where you're shaking that bait, and you give it a hop, and then you stop. And right when it starts to fall, they come and get it. So again, following that same trend, let's talk about the shaky head. Now there are exceptions to every rule. A shaky head 
sounds like a bait that you should be shaking and it works very well if you do that. But you can also take a shaky head and just drag that bait. Just drag it and let it sit. Drag it and let it sit. If you are shaking it, the biggest thing is don't forget to pause. When I have clients on the boat, one of the most common mistakes I see is people overworking a bait, whatever it is, shaking that bait or making big hops with that rod, being way too aggressive. Just let that bait sit. Those fish will come over and the next time it moves, they suck it in. That plastic worm is amazing for that. These fish just come and stare at it. They'll come in and track it and then suck it up. Now, the last rig, the drop shot, huge emphasis on the drop shot because this is probably the simplest way for the everyday angler to catch a ton of fish. A drop shot is basically just a plastic worm suspended up on the line. So the weight's down below, the hook is tied up the line, eight, 10, 12 inches off the bottom, and you just shake it. But again, the biggest mistake that anglers make is to shake that thing too hard and you see it every day when you're out on the water you'll see guys working that bait working 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 that's a mistake the best way to work that drop shot is either it will change either to shake it up and let it fall or just give it single bumps and let it fall a little hop 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 but the bites come after that bait has moved and it starts that dying action that settling to bottom that's when they react now if you want to take it even a step further here's a trick for you go to the lightest hook that you can this is an owner mosquito light that's a hook that tim and i have both fallen in love with over the last couple of years that hook weighs very very little compared to most of the drop shot hooks on the market that's why you see us use it so much it's light wire so you have to play those fish really slow so that they don't bend out. But the flip side is that when you hop that bait up and let it fall, it falls much slower back to bottom than it would on other hooks. And we definitely get more bites as a result. Now the thing with a plastic worm that's so nice is you don't have to do it perfectly. You don't have to have this dialed in technique. You know, they're throwing a swim bait. Some of the other techniques in bass fishing, you really have to know what you're doing. But with a worm, especially a weightless worm, you throw that Senko out there and just let it fall, you'll just see that line jump, reel down and set the hook. Now for you guys that have really grassy conditions, there's a lot of grass in your water, a huge factor for you to know, because we struggle with this all the time and we get these questions all the time. Well, what if there's grass in my lake? I can't fish a bait on the bottom. You might be amazed to know that when you're fishing a worm, whether it's a Texas rig or a weightless or a shaky head, it doesn't matter. When you're fishing a worm, as long as you're fishing it slow and methodically, oftentimes you don't even have to be on the bottom to get bit. A lot of times if you fish a worm on light enough line, it will sit on top of the grass. It won't sink down inside. It'll sit right up on the grass itself and the fish will come up and pick it right off of the grass. So don't worry about having a heavy enough weight to get down through the grass, or don't worry about getting snagged up on the grass. Go to a lighter weight or no weight at all and just slowly fish it across that grass up off the bottom and those fish will absolutely eat it. Crawdads, bugs, there are all sorts of things that live on and around that grass. It's totally natural for your bait to be up on top of it, not necessarily down on the bottom. Guys, this year, if you just wanna catch fish, the plastic worm is an easy way to do it. Again, there are so many ways to rig it and we have so many dedicated videos. We have in-depth videos on a Texas rig, a shaky, rig, a shaky head, a Ned rig, a drop shot, Carolina rigging, all these different ways in depth. So I didn't go that direction today at all. Today, the biggest takeaway I want you to have is to fish your bait slower and more methodically. Again, the footage speaks for itself. These fish are not eating when that bait is just flopping in the water, when it's vibrating like crazy. That is not 
when they're biting. You can work it like that, but it's when you stop that they react. So if you get in that mindset where you throw baits and you just shake them and you throw to the next spot and shake them, you are missing potential fish. Slow down. Now, if that method is working for you, keep doing it, but remember to add the pauses, shake it and stop. And I think you'll find that throughout the course of this year, you will catch a lot more fish than you were before. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the underwater footage. I hope that this helps you open your eyes and see exactly how and why these fish are reacting to your baits. Because once you understand that and you change the way you're working those baits, you will catch more fish. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.